What's going on, good people? Welcome to another edition of This Brother Can Fly. Now, it's time to go flying. Yes, it's time for the first flight lesson. And you're coming with me. Come on, let's go. Oh, but before we go, I have to do my subscriber shout out. Shout out to that guy over 50 and learning to fly. Hey man, thank you for the love. You were one of the first, kind of like my big brothers, my big YouTube brothers to reach out to me. Uh, so I appreciate that. So shout out to that subscriber over 50 and learning to fly. Okay, now let's get out of here. It's time for my first flight lesson. So I'm not gonna talk you to death because I've been doing a lot of talking. We've been talking about certificates and sign up day and all that kind of stuff. Now it's time to go over there, find my instructor, get in the plane and actually start my flight lessons. I can't tell you how excited I am that this day has finally come. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. You got okay. you, you can uh if you didn't push it the power button I'll make it a lot better. You just need to push it. Oh yeah, that's much and, better. <laughs> and if you want you can change that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's much volume. better. Okay. So the avionics is on, we got our Unicom is in here, is one two three zero, that's our frequency for this airport. Okay. Our uh weather is one one nine one one eight point nine two, that's the AWAS, that's the automated weather observing station. So this is COM one and this is COM two. Okay. So we hit that. Scattered. This is our weather. One thousand broken temperature one four Celsius two point seven altimeter three zero zero one. So three zero zero one is gonna go right there. Okay. I'll tell you that in a second. So this is a this is our altimeter. Pretty much a barometer, measure the height above sea level, okay. when set to the correct pressure. So our pressure is 3001, you put that in there, and it'll be about, our elevation is 302, it's like 290, just has to be within 75 feet. Okay, gotcha. Plus or minus. I tell you one thing, it's definitely different being in here than watching it on video. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, here we go. Yep. So the wind said 2408. So that means the winds are coming out of 240. Okay. So we have runway 24 and runway 6. We always want to take off into the winds. Okay. So if we have runway 24 and the winds are coming out of 24, we're going to take off 24. Okay. Pretty much whatever the number is close, the winds are closest to, that's where you're going to take off. Of. Okay. Gotcha. So our flaps we put up, mixture we're just going to lean about right about an inch. We're going to check our brakes. So I'm going to let go. My brakes are good. So you can check your brakes. So just push them. All right, let go. And your uh -oh. brakes are good. Okay, cool. And when I hit the brakes, I hit it with both feet basically at the yep, top? nice and even unless you're turning or something. Okay. Head and indicator is set to the compass. That's good. And that's all for now. We'll come back to it. So I'm going to make a radio call. Okay. Bring the traffic now. Okay, you're testing the two four from the runway. So I'll taxi us out of here. Okay. I'll let you taxi. I'm just going to get around the airplane. So all right, you have the controls. My controls. Wings traffic, Sirius 
314 Alpha, departing runway 24, VFR, right hand turn. So, you're just looking around, making sure there's no traffic, always looking around. Part of a uh, called runway incursion or uh, just runway incursion avoidance, just making sure there's no traffic that you're going to hit. Okay. We make a taxiway call because there's only one way up and one way down. So if you make a call saying you're going down, that way people know if they're coming up that there's going to be someone coming down. Gotcha. So they can wait for you or you can wait for them. So if you want to slow down, I usually pull the power first. And okay. Then, then you go on the brakes. That okay. way you don't use them as much. So you got the brake, you got the flight controls. Oh, my controls. Your controls. And you're just going to have the heels on the ground. Put your hand on the throttle. And we're going to start turning right here, so it's nice and easy, to the right. If you want to brake a little bit, you can slow down with the brakes, nice and, nice and uh, uh, smooth. And keep it on the center line, you just keep that center, that yellow line going right between your legs. Gotcha. This is not bad taxiing speed for now, we'll keep it a little, this is, a, this is actually a good speed for just taxiing in general. Got to get used to that. Yep, you're doing good though. Driving a car doesn't help you fly in it, drive an <laughs> airplane. <laughs> right. Not used to using your. So we want to slow down a little bit. Just bring a little power out. Oh. So pull it out. Oops, sorry. Very good. <laughs> And you can put in a little, real little bit of power. Yep, that's good. So this right spot up there, you see how the road that uh, goes to the right? Yes. That's called the run-up area. So that's where we do our run-up. That's where we check all of our check a bunch of stuff before we take off. Okay. So I got the flight controls. Your controls. My controls. The deer. Oh, good eye. <laughs> yeah, we gotta watch out for deer here. Low is going to be 1,700 RPMs, so we're just going to push this up to 1,700 and just hold the brakes nice and tight. And now you're going to check your, um, quick check your window. Is it like a uh, tight? There you go, that's good. So now we're going to check our magnetos. So you're going to turn the key two clicks to the left, so you're going to click, click. And watch your tachometer, it's going to drop a little bit. And turn it two clicks to the right. Now turn it one click to the left. And one yes, click to the right. So you're just looking for a drop. Like a slight little drop. Yeah, around 100 RPMs. Okay. If you hear it running rough, we would do a static run up. We'll go over that in a little while, some other time. Okay. So we checked our magnetos, pull our car peat, and watch your tachometer. You're looking for a drop. Got a nice little drop yeah. there. Push it back in, just make it sure it's working. Suction gauge is in the green. That's this right here. Okay. Engine instruments right here. They're in the green. Oil temperature is rising. Alternator. So you see the the master switch is two but two switches. Yeah. So flip the left switch and watch your ammeter. Now flip it back up. Oh move, yeah. Moves a little bit. Yeah. So that means our alternator is working and our our batteries obviously work because we turn our alternator off. Okay. So right here, lineup checklist. So we're gonna pull up to the that's called the hold short line. Okay. That uh the dash line you don't want to cross without stopping. The, I mean the solid line, the dash line, you can cross right off. So what we do, usually I come up here and just stop right here. We do our lineup checklist. Car P is off. Transponder is on alt altitude mode. Exterior lights, we'll throw our strobes on. We'll throw our, eh, we don't need our nav lights. And our pedal heat, we don't need either. So now we're ready to go. So now I'm gonna make a radio call and we're gonna take off. Okay. <laughs> so checking right and checking left, making sure there's no one coming in. Even though we didn't hear a radio call, it doesn't mean that they're not coming in. Gotcha. People don't technically need to fly with radios. So we're on the center line. We're just rolling right on the center line. We're going full power. Keeping our hands on the throttle. Gauges are green. Airspeed's alive. You can keep your hand okay. on the throttle. Once we get to about 55 knots, we're going to start to rotate nice and easy. And just pitching for about the horizon. That's going to give you around 75 knots. And you feel 
Oh, it's a little pressure there. You can come down and do yourself a little bit of trip. Just to take the pressure off. You don't need to make it perfect. Just okay. to take the pressure off. Gotcha. We'll go up to about 1,200 here. And then we'll turn to the right. So you have the flight controls. My controls. Your flight controls. And we're just going to hold. Just keep flying straight out. Okay. Looking good. So when we're about 700 AGL, I do a... Uh, I call it the... Uh, after takeoff checklist. Okay. Flaps up, extra rich, power is full, car P is off, and our, our uh, airspeed is VY, about 75. So we're gonna turn a little bit to the right here. And let's start turning to the right. I'll tell you when to stop. You can turn a little bit steeper. Okay. And you can roll out right about there. That's good shoot. Give yourself a little bit of right rudder. Okay. Just want to keep that ball right in the center there. Okay. So to do that, you step on the ball. So okay. a little right rudder or whatever you need. Usually it's a little right. See those towers out there? Yeah. Those are the Limerick towers. So those are a good reference point. Okay. Um, we'll find more reference points as we get out further. I'll show you some other ones. Let's turn a little bit more to the right. So this is going to be 330. Okay. Added. So you can turn to 330, and we're going to go up to 3,000 on the altimeter. Okay. So we're about 2,500. Small one is 2,000, big one is hundreds. Gotcha. But to level off, what we're going to do is we're going to, about 50 feet below, we're going to start to pull the power out to about 2,300 RPMs. Okay. So we're going to let the nose come down, and then we're going to trim it out. So right about now, start pulling the power down. Yep, you can pull it down a little faster. Right about there is good. We're gonna fly at level. So this is our turn or attitude indicator. So we're level now basically. Yep, we're see we're climbing a little bit now. So we're starting to climb, just pushing those down. Okay. We don't want to get into uh Philadelphia's airspace. Um so this is the attitude indicator, 10, 20, 30 to 60 and 90. So we're going to do medium bank turns between 15 and 30. Okay. So pretty much no steeper than the thick tick mark, the first one there. Gotcha. So what we're going to do is give ourselves a little bit of nose down trim. We're going to get down to 3,000. Seems like a lot at first, but after a few flights you get used to it. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a lot going on. So level off here at 3,000, and you can tr try trimming yourself out. So okay. for the trim, up is down and down is up. So it's opposite. It's weird. So And with the trim, you just want to do a little correction. So do a little bit. Okay. See what happens. Do a little bit more. See what happens. So that, I guess that feels good there. So right now we're climbing. Oh. So the so way I, I do it down. is we fly it nice and level. Uh-huh. Just take all the pressure off and then let go and see if you need it a little bit. So trim is pretty sensitive. Okay. So even a little bit will uh, make a ch make a change. Gotcha. So it's kind of let go of the yoke right now. You can let go. And once it go up a little bit, I just come back, give yourself a little Indeed. bit, of those down. Oh, those down. Okay. You can let go now. You can let go now. And it's a it's pretty good. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just enough so you can. Fly. Just to take the pressure off of like yep. having to fight it. Exactly. So you can fly hands off. All right, so this is our, mat, our compass, our heading indicator. This is our, uh, it's just 360 degrees. So whenever I give you a heading to turn to, like 030 would be there. Okay. 1850 would be there, or 270 would be there. Okay. So we can turn to 270 now. And when you turn it, see how the ball goes a little to the left there? Yeah. 
You just need to step on the ball, give yourself a little left rudder. We just had to hold the nose up a little bit so we don't descend too much at okay. all. And yeah, what's the head in? When you're just doing a slight turn like that, about 10 degrees before is when you can start rolling out. Okay. So keep our nose down a little bit more. Let's turn to the right to 330. 330. And as you're turning, just hold the nose up. You don't want to climb in the turn, you just want to hold the nose level. Okay. And right about there. Definitely seemed like I wanted to turn to the right a lot quicker. Yeah. Got a little wind blowing us around. Do is we're going to descend down 500 feet. We'll descend down to 2,500. Okay. Excuse me. Where we descend is I pull power down. You can pull it down to like 1,800 RPM or something. I just pulled down enough to get a nice descent coming down. Put a full little power down. Maybe give yourself a little bit of nose up trim. And just a nice descent, like five to eight hundred feet per minute. We don't have to just you don't have to descend excessively unless you really have to. Right. But usually we don't. Just nice nice slow descent. You can you can use the trim whenever you want. You can use it on descents, climbs, whatever, just Makes your life easier. Gotcha. So we'll descend down to 2,500. And we'll hold our head in. If you're climbing, this is a vertical speed indicator. It'd be going up or down. But okay. it's pretty level. It kind of bounces around because we're bouncing around a real little bit. And our altimeter is our main climbing instrument. That's not going up really at all. So that's good. So we're not at 2,005? Yep, we're at 2,500. Okay. Let's turn to the right to zero six zero. Zero six zero. And so when you're turning there, you're getting a little climb there. So just make sure we keep our nose down a little bit. Okay. And you can shallow it out a little bit. You don't need to turn quite that steep. When we're turning, just like 15 to 30 degrees for a normal turn. Gotcha. We'll do steep turns eventually, but not right now. So right there, zero six zero. Yep. Yep. So zero six zero is right there. Any of the single digits is going to be start with a zero. Okay. So zero one zero all the way up to zero nine zero is going to be. Gotcha. Zeros. Anything else is going to end with a zero usually. Zero nine nine, I guess, would be the highest. So right to our right there, we have Greaterford Prison. That's a good reference point. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. A little bit bumpy. <laughs> Oh. Let's uh, go full power and climb up to 3,000. Okay. And same with level one off, bring the power out, about 50 feet below, and I'll level you off right about 3,000. So you can go full power, power in. It's only gonna be a couple hundred feet. Right here's the turnpike. Oh, yeah? Yep, right down there. We're about over like Souderton right now, Franconia. Yeah. So there's 3,000, bring some power out. And let's turn to the right here, to uh, 150. So if we want to find the airport again, uh -huh. find the find the turnpike and fly south. Okay. And it'll take you right to the airport. If you fly south on the left side of the air on the left side of the turnpike, it'll take you right to the airport. Gotcha. There's Philly, so you can literally follow the turnpike south uh, towards yeah. Philly right to the airport. Um, this is our sectional, this is our map. So the turnpike is right here, that thicker line, and airport is right there. So the airport is literally right next to the turnpike. Gotcha. So it makes it really easy. If you uh, eventually, I'll expect find the airport. Well, if you find the turnpike, you can find the airport. Gotcha. Sweet. Um, let's turn to the right to 210. 10. Oh, it's going a little bumpy. And let's turn to 180. 180. We can bring a little power out. About 2,000 RPM. Yeah, right about there. So we're going to do our descent checklist. Okay. So let's pull a little bit more power out, and you can start descending down to 2,000. 
We're going to check our weather now, so the way we check our weather is we hit the top one and comp two. Okay. Five, one, Zulu, weather, wind, two, two, zero, at six, visibility. Really, we're just checking our winds, because everything else is going to be pretty much the same. Our mixture, we're going to make sure it's rich. Our carburetor heat is in. Okay. Our fuel selector, we're going to make sure it's on both. Our approach briefing, what we're going to do is we're going to cross over the airport and enter the downwind for 2-4. Okay. Before landing, passenger briefing, just that's what we're going to, we're going to enter the downwind for 2-4. Seat belts are fastened. Fuel sector is on both. Yep. Mixture is rich. Car heat is cold. And you can flip our landing light on, so that's the switch right there. Flip that on. And that's all we have to do. Okay. So whenever we're making radio calls, we're usually start about 10 miles out, or about 6 miles out, but that's okay. We don't technically have to make radio calls at non-towered airports, but okay. we do because it's safe. And I want to get used to doing that, you know, just to be yep. a habit. Yep, so uh, next time, I'll go over it a little bit more next time so you get more in the habit. I'll make them for today, okay. and you'll start making them for the next, uh, next flight. Link Shadow, we now want to go back here, 6 miles to the northwest, and bound 2 4 -way. All right, so we're at 2,500. Our pattern altitude is 1,500. Okay. So that's the altitude we want to be at before we get into the traffic pattern. Okay. So the airport is over there. Do you see it? Yes. All right, so we have the airport in sight. So since we have the airport in sight, we're about five miles out now. That's when I would start making my descent down to 1,500. Okay. So you can start descending down. You don't need to descend too fast because, you know, we're still five miles out. Okay. So this, yeah, this is, like, this is good even. Yeah, I put it, just pulled a little power out. Yep, just nice and easy. No need to get down too fast. If you forget to descend, that's okay. You'll just have to descend a little faster. Right. But if you can do it this far out, it makes your life easier. And it's not uncomfortable. So what I do is you usually make your first call about 10 miles out. Okay. If you're like, we're six miles out, that was, that's not a big deal. Final runway two four. So I'll make like a 10 mile call, then like a five, five mile, mile call, okay. and like a two mile call, and then, or even I'll probably make like a 10 or five, and like, I'll make my next call, maybe like a three or two, and then when I'm crossing over, I'll make another call. Gotcha. Then we'll make a downward call, a base call, and a final call, and a clear of the active call, or a clear of the runway. So usually I fly the downwind about 2,000 RPMs. So if you're 2,000 RPMs now, once you get down to 1,500, just level it off. Okay. So you don't even need to add or, dis to add or decrease power. Just level it off and it'll slow us down a little bit. Gotcha. So we're crossing over midfield, so we're gonna cross over the middle of the field. Usually I keep it to the right a little bit, so it gives us a little more time when we turn. Okay. It gives us a little more time on the downwind. Other ways you can enter the pattern are on the 45. So we're landing runway six. I would have entered this way and came. I would have entered this way and on the 45 and then entered the downwind. But gotcha. we're flying 2 4, so we're going to cross over. If we were down south, I would have entered the downwind. And gotcha. So, we're crossing over. Make sure we don't want to break the air across the field and we're down to pull it. So, we're going to level it out now. So, bring the nose up. Just give yourself a little nose up trim if you need it. If you don't need it, that's fine. Whatever you need, that's where we'll, we'll fly next level. We're gonna do this on the downwind, but I can I do it now since we're crossing over. Okay. It's called the gump shack list with gases on both. Undercarriage is good. Mixture is wit rich. Power is set. Seat belts are fastened. Okay. So we're always keeping our eye on our runway, so you can look at our runway. Turn downwind. Usually you want to be about a mile out, three quarters, half to a mile. I usually say about three quarters of a mile. Okay. So right about now we're gonna turn downwind. And I'm going to take the throttle for this. Okay, so go you ahead. Keep your hand on there. Okay. So my flight controls, but you can keep your, your controls. hand. So once we get a beam or numbers, we're going to do something we call the landing configuration. Okay. So we just want to keep our eye on our runway. We want to fly the downwind nice and parallel with the runway. Okay. So this is downwind. There's our numbers right off to our left there. Car repeat. Hey, Power 1500. Once we get in that white arc, we can throw in 10 degrees of flap. We want to turn base about 45 degrees off of the um, off of the runway. Okay. So the runway, you got, you see the runway? Yep. We're about 45 off, right about there. Let's start turning base now. Wait, we got one. Zero base, two, four, wait. 
Once we're on base, we're gonna add a not the, another nacho flap. Okay. And we're just making small power corrections. When we're on base, we're gonna be about 75 knots. So we're a little bit high. We're gonna drop a little power. That's another trim to trim it out. This is nice and stable. Nice and easy. Coming in about 70, 70 knots is good. We're trying to get white over red. So red over white means you're all right. Red over red means you're dead. White <laughs> over white means you're too high. Okay. Look to the sky. So we want to be white over red. If that red should be coming in here soon. Right about here, we're pretty much on glide slope. Still a real little bit high, but not too much. Right there, you see it turn red? Yeah. So we're looking good. Nice and easy. Once we're going to make the runway, we're just going to bring the power out. I give myself a little nose up trim. Just fly it nice and level across the runway. Holding the nose off. Holding it off. When we're landing, we're looking down the runway. Okay. And we're just, we call it flaring when we pull the nose up. Okay. So what I do is we fly down, aiming out the numbers, fly level across the runway. Okay. And when you start to flare, you're starting to bring the nose up nice and easy and smooth. You don't want to do it like this. Okay. Or you'll porpoise up, we call it. And oh. you'll pop up and you'll be a little too high over the runway. Oh, okay. That's when you're going to have a really hard land. And that's when you would probably want to go full power. Gotcha. Go around. Nice and easy. Wait. And what we do is we do our securing. So we go brakes hold. We do this. I'll show you, you listen to the engine. You hear it shut off for a yeah. second? So that means it's grounded. Okay. So we want to make sure that works. So we just go off and on real fast. Okay. You can pull the mixture. So press the button and pull it all the way out. That's going to cut our power. Oh, wow. You're going to turn the keys all the way off. Pull it out. Put it on here. We're going to turn our avionics off. You can flip that switch down. So I just finished my first official flight lesson. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> oh. No, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Uh, it was fantastic. It was... Uh, I, I felt good about it because I wasn't as fearful as I thought I was going to be. Um, I, I definitely can't stress enough that a discovery flight is definitely something you should do if you're even thinking about taking flying lessons. Because one of the things that made that lesson, uh, one of the things that, <laughs> I can't talk man, I'm like really, like I'm in my feelings right now. but. Um, and I want to stop, but you know, cause I don't want to embarrass myself, but you know, I don't want to pretend like this hasn't felt somewhat monumental. So, um, so I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to like, you know, do this thing. But so the discovery flight helped from the standpoint that it really helped make sure that I understood everything that was going to be going on with the airplane. Have a good flight. Um, in terms of the movement, the turbulence, that kind of thing. And so that's why I highly recommend you do a discovery flight. Um, but the first lesson though, it was like, you know, I have thought about starting this journey for about a year and I've chickened out and I've doubted myself. And, you know, there's been times where I thought there's no way I should be doing this. I don't belong in this life. This is, you know, things that the rich and famous do um and so just to know that little old me uh nothing special uh came out here and uh, i'm on my way to getting my private pilot's license and you know doing that first lesson just made it all real so i hope you enjoyed this video um keep with me because that's only the first one um, and I think I am now 1.5 hours into my logbook. Um, theoretically, it only takes uh, 45 hours or something like that, but 
in reality, it'll probably be something like 60 to 65 hours of flight time before um, I actually get my license. So again, I thank you for all the support thus far. I thank you for people who are following me on this channel who, already have, who have already subscribed. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and join me on this journey. Hit the bell so that you know when new videos have been loaded, all right? I thank you for joining me on this journey. Russ really can fly because I did so. Uh, signing off, peace.